Hi everyone, so this video is going to be a review of Ultimate Cyber Frog Blood Honey. This is my first uh, comic review video and um, like a while back Ethan Van Skyver, one of his videos I recall him saying he'd like to have seen more reviews and I would wanted to do one for a while so I figured I'd, I'd I've just been busy but I figured I'd try to get one uh, better late than never. So this is nothing fancy, just a uh, Kind of like how your boy Zach used to do them, just with my cell phone and paging through it. Um, I'm going to, uh, there will probably be spoilers. I'm, I plan on going through the through it chronologically. So if you haven't read the book yet, you can probably just uh, start and then uh, just uh, stop watching at some point. But um, so just to, so just to get going, uh, I started watching uh, Ethan's videos a little later on, so I missed uh, the first Blood Honey uh, campaign. This is uh, one of his follow-up campaigns. So this book includes Blood Honey and then also a diary of um, Heather Swain in it. Uh, I wanted to read his stuff from the 90s first, his originals. And I did. I, first, I got uh, Warts and All, which is a compilation of his... Uh, his 90s work and uh maybe sometime sometime i'd like to review this as well it's um uh, there's a lot more to review here but um and one thing uh ethan said is that you probably don't need to read that to enjoy blood honey i i would disagree as i think there is some uh background in there that was handy to know as i as i read blood through blood honey um, so, but, uh, just to give first, like in case someone doesn't want to watch through and what he want, they want to avoid spoilers. Uh, I do highly recommend this comic. If, if you're, um, if you're a fan of like superhero comics, and whatnot for me, it is especially up my alley. Cause I, frogs are my favorite animal growing up. I used to, uh, collect a ton of frog stuff, books about them. Uh, like ever, like, uh, when like beast wars, I, I was sure to get the spit or the frog beast war figure. Uh, I got the frog, um, was it the battle beast toy? And then, the and I was a big fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And, uh, I was sure to get like, uh, Genghis frog and Napoleon Bonafrog toys when those came out. And, and then, yeah, so and then along with being a big fan of like frogs and ninja turtles, I was a big fan fan of uh bionic characters like um like BP Vest from the show cop uh the, the cartoon show cops, not the uh not the uh live action series and uh and Robocop and and then I was I'm a huge fan of Transformers still. So 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 this character, like when I found out about it, was like a perfect combination of interest for me, like with the frog and with the, uh, with the tech. And so, and, uh, and so, so I may be biased. I just share that to, so you know that I may be biased towards this comic, towards this character. But I think, uh, I think it, it's like if you like other superhero comics and stuff, I think you'd like this. I used to uh, collect mainly Spider-Man and Deadpool. And then I pretty much got out of it when Spider-Man had the one more day uh, storyline. So, uh, so yeah, I would um, shouldn't think of a number. I, I'd give it at least a, I'd say a seven out of ten, maybe higher. Um, I think I think part of it is because the story the story is incomplete yet. And I'm looking forward to uh, getting Wreck Planet when it arrives and reading through that, and then continuing with uh, Dark Harvest after that. So now I think uh, again, I'll pop it open and just go through some details. I'll try not to show everything, and, uh, but just cover some of the things I took notes on. But the first thing I'm wondering about, like uh, with the fine print, and this is more of a question than a review, is I'm, I'm looking into making my own comic. So if anyone can answer this, like I'm wondering if what needs to go be behind this could it, could I just like a? Can someone just create a company name and then pretty much kind of copy this 
uh, format or do you need to like actually apply for trademarks and all that stuff before you could put something like this in a comic? And is it even really necessary for a comic? And that's just kind of a question. If anyone can point me to some uh, good info on that, I appreciate it. But that's uh, not part of this review. But anyway, as for this review, see, uh, Ethan's artwork is amazing. I think he does a fantastic job. And Kyle Ritter's coloring is awesome. I've got a note for, for this uh, for this shot here, this opening. It's, it's a great opening for a comic with uh, the uh, you got the shot of the star here. But I actually... Um, didn't notice and uh, that this was this it may just be me but this uh, was actually um, Kelsine and I, I might be pronouncing that wrong but it's okay because Ethan pronounces my name wrong all the time so uh, but I didn't realize that's Kelsine shooting up until like maybe the third time I looked at this page and then that's just goes with uh, the medium of a comic versus like if this was animation or a movie and you'd see the movement there. Uh, for me, I just uh, I thought it was maybe another flare or something. And so I was wondering like uh, maybe if it was at a different angles such that it's kind of tilted more this way. So Kelsey would be coming closer to the top page because it is a great shot like this. If the movements there, it would be, it'd be perfect. But, and then, yeah, that might just be me, but um, that's kind of like one critique I, I was thinking of. Otherwise, I, I think the the intro pacing is really good for what it is. It can be hard, like, as I'm thinking of, like, my comics, the comic scripts uh, I'm working on, it's like how much intermediate, intermediate steps do I want to put in for panels? And that's kind of something I've seen change over the years with comics, like... Uh, I think like the the first Spider-Man comics, you got like his whole, you get, you get bitten by a spider. He had the wrestling match and then uh, Uncle Ben's death all in the first comic as opposed to the newer Ultimate Spider-Man. I think it was like several issues before he got, he got his, co before he got his costume and stuff. And so it's kind of like comic pacing has gone slower over, over time. But I, I, I think, uh, uh, Ethan has really good pacing here. Um, one thing, I'll actually go back to this. Uh, he calls this part one, and now the book is uh, it's a three-part book. I would actually call this, uh, I think I would instead call it a, uh, a prologue or introduction. Is, um, and this is kind of getting into spoiler territory here, but part one is to is meant to like, cover it's kind of an overview of every of what happened in the 90s but not exactly what happened so it's it's ethan's trying like setting up the character i think uh i'd say the majority of the story for this book is part two whereas then part three i would call like an epilogue it'd be a long prologue and a long epilogue but i think that that those titles would uh be more kind of appropriate for uh for the story. Now I, I did notice like a typo here. And in that moment out two worlds were conjoined. Uh, and I imagine like it should be, it should be our, and I imagine something like that can be hard to uh, find like, uh, and, and that's not, I'm, another question. If anyone knows like what kind of software is you uh, used for this? I think if it's something just like Microsoft word and it's like uh put in there. Of course, a spell checker won't catch that, but there are newer, um, I think like there's newer software that would catch that. And then maybe there might be specifically comic software that could, but, uh, I'm not sure, but I, I will say like, um, if anyone's interested, I, for, I used to be a part-time editor for a couple years, like years ago. And, uh, I do work with like technical documents and often will spot like, uh, typos or whatnot, in, uh, in those, so um, if anyone's interested, I'd be I'd be up for proofreading uh, anyone's scripts or comics that uh, if they're yeah, if they're interested, you can like uh, contact me, like comment or on Twitter or something, and uh, and yeah, maybe 
maybe I can help you out. And yeah, now this, yeah, I really, I mean, this is just great artwork, and I really appreciate the detail with the, the frog skeleton and stuff. But I was thinking one thing is this, this is a complex sequence of, like, cyber frog forming out of his, uh, his like, I don't know if, like, uh, embryo stage, I don't know if this is probably not the right term for it, but I was thinking maybe some, like, inserts, like, would, would help here if you put like a that would show different stages of kind of transformation it's another thing where like an animation would you, you can do more with that and show like the whole sequence of the transformation because uh this one shot though it's really a really great shot i don't know if it quite captures that full transformation as like as it as much as it could I, I like uh oh no I have his I like uh I like how Cyberfrog looks like uh looks like his mother Kelson here. You see the, like uh in the following uh pictures you'll see his armor have taken on the same shape of of her like uh her body. Again, really just excellent artwork. And it, it's kind of like it's it's a thing as working as an engineer that kind of get kick out of like with uh, with transformers and other stuff. It's like you know I know it's just a comic and whatnot, but all that material being able to like say fit in his arm. It's like when the transformers. It's like how in G one they talk about how it was Megatron able to shrink and sound wave when they transformed, and then they came up with this con concept of subspace. Um, I think like, like the idea I have for a comic, I kind of want to avoid that, make it more realistic, but, but for, for the comic, it, when, when you see it in animations and stuff, it does look really cool. So, uh, but one thing I would, I would, I would say, uh, this would have been, I forget if this was in warts and all, I think this might've been something that better saved for later on. Cause it is so impressive. I think in this armor, it, it should have been, uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, should have been something that would have been better for like our later reveal. It's kind of like showing so much right now, and then it just raises expectations early and for for later on. So that'd be my one critique. Critique there is to have like saved saved this uh, form of cyber frog for later on. I will say I do hope that in a future campaign. We get we get this action figure with the uh, the helmet and everything, and I hope we get a Kelsey toy. Though that'll that'll be really big, and I you know the imagine the cell Android is going to be challenging. Ethan's talked about how much of a challenge his uh, action figure campaigns have been already. So it'll be fun to watch and uh, watch along and see how that goes. Now th this this uh, sequence this uh, panel here. Is a uh, Kelsey telling Cyberfrog about uh, a little bit about his purpose, about like the Vispas, and I was thinking, and maybe it depends on how much Ethan like wanted to save here. I was thinking maybe this would have been better. I think it would have conveyed more if you used like a full page for this, and instead of showing Cyberfrog's page face like you maybe could still have this have this picture but use the full page and then have sub panels and insert panels showing the vispiz destroying other civilizations so then you'd be able to create like uh other alien races and i, I know ethan's like he's talking about his doing his, that work like creating mutants and x-men and uh other aliens and green lantern and i think that would have been a really cool shot and if, i know like uh i think like uh, when I put together my other videos, I try to use visuals because like just uh, reading text, at least for me, it doesn't sink in as well. The visual aids really help. And so I, I think that would have had a had a greater impact. But then, of course, it's like weighing uh, versus how much of this Piz do you want to reveal this early 
as opposed would that take away from later on when they actually show up? And that might have been what Ethan was thinking here, like just wanted to to save that for the reveal later on. Good characterization here with uh, the characters, just like uh, Kelsey and, uh, and the, with the dialogue, like uh, she's saying so much. And then uh, just in a few small uh, uh, statements from uh, Cyberfrog and Cell Mantroid, he's like revealing their character and uh, kind of getting the, the reader caught up to, uh, to what they're like, to their personalities. Now here we have the introduction of uh, Ben Riley, who's in uh, back in one of the older comics, and um, th again, this is why I think it helps to have read, uh, even though Blood Honey isn't following that say continuity precisely, hundred percent. It help it helps to have that backstory here, and I think what would have been a good idea is. Uh, and this goes for other villains revealed later on who oops, who used to be, who were in previous stories. Just to have like a, and, and he actually, and Ethan does do this like later on uh, for some of the other characters. But to have just had a quick like, uh, like a, maybe a quick bio um, just in, in like a, in a word block, like uh, given the name and the powers just a, in a quick sentence, so you, you kind of so you have a little idea of what Heather's dealing with here and what Cyberfrog saving saving her from. And uh, just this line here, I thought I think it might be in reverse. It's kind of like "Get away from me, Ben, you creep." I kind of think it should have been like "Ben, you creep, get away from me." And that might that be uh, I think that would flow better and kind of make more sense with what she would say. That'd be. Uh, it's something for an editor. Now, Eric Weathers did a great job lettering. I, I remember uh, I just caught one of Ethan's videos talking about like the word balloons and stuff, and I love how uh, how like some of the different characters, like Cyberfrog, has a different style, and Kelsey, so it kind of like represents how they might sound different or whatnot. But one thing though that is like uh, a few times in here. These yo's look like 40. This is the second t time I was reading through this, like, uh, to prepare for this review. And I was like, first time I saw it, I was like, what, what is he saying 40 for? But it's, it's actually, and so that's, again, that's probably just me, but, but otherwise, yeah, the weather's, uh, lettering is fantastic. Now here, uh, Cyberfrog is talking about <clears throat> Kelsey uh, his battery or something. How are they, uh, how she gave it to them and how and how he's ups he's like perturbed by Heather using it to power the TV. That's another thing I, I, I forget was in uh, one of the pre is a previous comic, but that's another thing I think like would have helped by having just like a say a quick uh, word like a, a block explaining a little more about why that is and, and maybe there maybe a. Uh, Ethan's saving that for a reveal for later on. I don't think so, based on what happens in this in these comics. But um, but yeah, it's kind of it's kind of an item that's just added in there, and I mean it, it does serve a purpose later on. But I think it could have used a little more backstory, like uh, like like uh, Ben Riley and some of the villains. And I know this is this was used for a gag, but like a uh, cell mandroid putting his head through the wall. I don't know. I'm kind of wondering, like how how he like approached the this building before, and because I I think I think like Cyberfrog had been living there for a while, and for like um, how and like now Salamandra put a hole in the wall, and um and I, I get it's a gag, but it, it's just uh, so it's just one of those things you I guess you can't think about too much. How did it's the, the gag is how Cyberfrog didn't see him there or whatnot, but yeah, yeah. And, and again, Ethan has like great artwork throughout. But th this is a panel that kind of um, here it looks like Cyberfrog and Sal Mandroid are about the same size, and I imagine it's a perspective thing, but um, where Cyberfrog's supposed to be closer, but it, it doesn't really. 
look like that to me. And, and that, and it's it, like, this is, I couldn't do nearly as good as Ethan. Like, again, this isn't to take away from his artwork, but just a, a critique. I, I thought I'd mention that I noticed as I was going through this and like, uh, I'm wondering if like positioning would have shown better if like, again, it's, it's probably something like the medium of the comic versus say animation or a movie or something. And this is, and a lot of these are nitpicks, but, um, just like kind of like uh, I thought maybe these would be helpful critiques and, and that's why I bring them up again. I, I love the comics, so I'm not trying to um, to like dump on it by any means. I mean, it's like it is, it is really, really good comic. But like like this one, this picture just looks so, and again, it's not like I could do it better. This uh, looks a little off to me. It's kind of like, like it's coming straight. It's like the ground showed at an angle, but it's coming in. It, it, I, I, would, I don't know. It's like, and, and yeah, again, maybe it's just me, but I think this it kind of looks like it should be angled, kind of like it's coming in from the other side of, say, the camera, the way the impact is. But, yeah, I might just be looking at it wrong, though. So. And, like, this shot is, I think, is great expression. Uh, a fear here uh, versus as a contrast it with uh, this one is a little isn't as she doesn't look as surprised um, and, and it's that's something I kind of noticed uh, I think throughout the comic you get a lot you get somewhere the, the expression is really there you can really see how scared say someone is and then other times the characters look a little more, their expression is a little more flat. And, uh, and that might just be like, of course, the uh, kill scene is the focus of this panel. So not every panel is going to get as much detail. <laughs> but that's just uh, kind of a critique I had. And, that's, uh, and, and part of that is, uh, is like with the art style. Like Ethan uses really realistic art here and, and it, i know it looks like a contrast from his earlier work as cyber frog like from the 90s uh where it wasn't as realistic and uh and when uh something isn't as realistic you can say you can uh give more expression like uh you can make the eyes bigger you can make the mouth wider than you know in real life and i I think my, my favorite is, I think of the 2000 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. That's like my favorite show. And I, and I think that was probably my favorite balance of like realism and, um, and still expression. Cause they still look, the humans still look realistic, but they, uh, but you're still able to make the eyes like wider, things like that, and really give off the expression versus like, I've seen some of the avatar like my my kids have watched that uh, last Airbender series, and that one, I've, the scenes I've seen, the, ex the expressions were even were like greater than they looked unrealistic to me, and to a point where I didn't like it as much. And that's going to be um, that's going to just be uh, people's preference. Uh, but it is. Uh, it's something I've kind of, I've kind of noticed with comics, like to like the earlier stuff from way back when, like Stanley and their artwork. Uh, just how I remember it, there, it was it wasn't had it wasn't as expressive as um, as some of the artwork I, I see now. But yeah, here we have the uh, first appearance of Rumble being here again. I think uh, like a small bio would have been nice, uh, would have been helpful, uh, a, ni a nice addition. And I think, like, uh, I know this is, like, being faithful to what I look like in the 90s, but this kind of goes to, like, what I was just talking about with uh, how the earlier comics didn't look as realistic. I th I think uh, Rumblebee's design here is, looks a bit cartoony compared to, uh, like, right next to him, Cyberfrog. Cyberfrog looks more like a real frog, like his head and the design of it versus, like, Rumble B with his big mouth like that looks uh, looks more like a cartoon character. So so there's a little bit of conflict there. And it is nice, like 
<clears throat> say if you have the Ninja Turtles or Cyber Frog, who have the like bigger mouth and bigger eyes that you can like get that ex like more expression out of them while still seeing keeping them realistic at least as much as a real as realistic as like a you know a giant frog can look like uh and that and that's something maybe with rumble bee can do here but uh i think it's it's kind of a clash of of styles in this case i think like uh maybe rumble bee's eyes and mouth were smaller for it like uh since he's not a frog i think given that he's supposed to be like an insect that that would have looked more realistic uh, versus uh, the, the classic design. And yeah, we're in part two and there's a lot of great action in the, in this, uh, in part two of the comic. I think this is like the main storyline and body of the comic. And I think it's, I think the pacing, the pacing is excellent. Like it keeps going. It's a, that, like the action keeps going and it's a, uh, it's a fun read. This is one thing I want to go back to, like uh, <clears throat> in comics, I really like the, the sound effects. I think they add a lot to the comic, and like in the when the vispids are first showing up here, you got all the the buzzing sound effects in here. Whereas later on, they're they're not in there as much, uh, and and I I can understand that that can like you know save time can be a lot of work putting all of those like z's and sound effects in there and so it's kind of like you just accept it now but i i think i think it would still add to the comic like uh it, it adds to like this idea of commotion and noise when you have those sound effects in there and then of course there's the bouncing act of how much do you want to put in versus you don't want to like clutter up the artwork so here, here's a panel that uh, stuck out to me, uh, I've seen, and this will happen every now and then with comics. It can be kind of tricky knowing the direction you're supposed to read. Like, how can there be this many of you you read first because it's at the top? But then back up off me is a little bit higher than give me some. So you, so you think like, but then give me some is on the left, whereas like we read left to right in English. So you may read this as give me some and then back up off me. But from the next panel, you want to see it should be like, give me some space. So ju just a critique is like maybe putting that would be putting that balloon up higher or like up in uh, like up around here or something or putting putting that balloon here and then this uh, give me space down there. So it's it's just a small nitpick, but it's not, like some of these I just, I, these critiques I just think might be helpful just for anyone working on comics and stuff. So that's just why I'm throwing that in there. Now, th th and, and now th this panel kind of um, had uh, had me a little confused. That, like uh, I don't know if it's a different camera angle, but like you got Cyber Frog crashing into the water, and, um, and so he's like falling down. But now here it looks like he's standing up. So I don't know. If maybe it's meant that the that these things from around him like reoriented his him or something like that. That's just uh, that's something that kind of stuck out to me. And it's actually like uh, had like this idea for like uh, hibernation for a character that I had in mind, like uh, just a way to start out, say. Uh, a story that would take place in the future would be kind of like uh, a, a potential like future scenario and it'd start out where like he you know got fell in the water and got knocked out kind of a lot like this so i just i just thought that it's interesting that like uh i had this idea before and then uh i see like uh ethan doing it for for his comic now one thing i'm wondering is why did Cyber Frog wake up? And maybe that's something that'll be revealed later on, or maybe that's um it does say system status restored, so maybe it's just uh um is repair. But considering the amount of time that passed it, <laughs> I think uh maybe a little more explanation might have been helpful, just like uh just stating like 
how how bad his like injuries were or something, which uh, I guess it could make sense you know, how long he's in uh like he's in the explosion and whatnot. So yeah, this is just a excellent artwork. This is I love this shot here. That's a, like uh, and Ethan's shown this a lot in his uh, promos and stuff, and it, it really shows how much uh, like the, the comic artist, not just like an artist, but also kind of like a director by picking the camera angles and stuff and what they show. And they're also kind of like the actor too, by like uh, putting that, by giving them their body language and their facial expressions. So uh, there's a lot, there's a lot that goes into creating comic more than just the artwork or more than I say, like just drawing and coloring, but there's a, there's gotta be a lot of thought behind it. And now this one, I, I don't know what this, this panel is here for. I get there's a, a lot of vispas around, I, but uh, this one just kind of seemed out of place, I thought. Um, I don't know what I was really trying to convey here. This little sequence didn't make sense to me. Like, Lily went to look for him, so assuming Cyberfrog. And then uh, then when she finds him, I, I would expect her to kind of be more, like, surprised about it. Uh but but maybe again that's like uh, that might be something Ethan has to uh, that he'll reveal in the in the next one, which I'm really looking forward to. And then like uh, just kind of wondering, it's like uh, Lily turns around and screams for Heather. Now now she went walking out from the from the place, but then and so I'm wondering like she must not be that far for her to have been able to yell. And for Heather to having heard her like that, but I would think she would have <laughs> walked further away. So I thought I just thought that was a little inconsistent there. But now um the rest of this is from the diary of Heather Swain. And I actually think this would have been um it would, would have been nice if, if these these scenes were like intermingled with uh, within Blood Honey. <clears throat> and I know Blood Honey came out first and then Ethan wrote this, but it and it's definitely a great companion piece to Blood Honey. <clears throat> so in maybe a future edition Ethan might want to try to do that, just like mix them together into one straight chronological story. So then you got the shots of the action with Cyberfrog and Cell Mandroid going on at the same time as the action that uh, Heather's dealing with. And, and, and this is kind of what I was, uh, uh, ref like when I was talking about um, Ben Riley earlier and um, Rumblebee. Just this, this is uh, like uh, this intro for Traumadeus. Just tr Traumadeus was some kind of Frankenstein's monster street musician made of organ parts. And then it like gives a little bit more as it go. I, I think something like that would have been perfect with uh, for uh, Ben Riley and Rumblebee earlier. And here's just another example, kind of a like a I'd say a flat expression. <clears throat> and yeah, I, I know it, it can be uh, uh, may not appreciate the challenge it is to bring forth expressions in artwork, but. Uh, it's kind of like here, I uh, kind of, I think, uh, like, you got the vispas right behind her. I think her eyes would be, like, up wider, her eyebrows up higher, her, like, jaw hanging lower, stuff like that. Maybe uh, maybe her body language even more backed up. Uh, it, of course, like, if, you, if it's, like, a video or something and you just happen to catch, like, this would be an early... Uh, like an early frame of her like getting more and more scared but then like for a comic when you you want to pick like say the best frame to show the um to show what you're trying to convey and the in their feelings and uh uh yeah the expression and stuff now here's like um here's a question i i thought of as reading this like they wear red because the vispas can't see red like real life wasps can't see red but i was like wondering so does that actually mean that something that's red is completely invisible to them like they'd see the background behind them 
or is it just like a color blindness? Whereas say like someone who's like red, green color blind, they still see the object, but it's just, they just look like the same color. This is a, it's, that'd be really interesting if like really a, like the a wasp, like would just say a red building would not even see it's there. So, so, so that's, I'm just kind of curious about that. And yeah, this, this is actually kind of a contrast here for expressions. I think this is a really good express, expressive shot of uh, Heather versus this one. Um, I think like uh, Matt maybe would have his head maybe tilt a little bit with uh, with an eyebrow raised. He it, 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 it looks kind of like a... Yeah, he's not having a reaction. You don't see the, the reaction in his face that kind of you'd expect. And then you know, th this is a, originally this was a separate comic than from a blood honey, but like th this where it would have been helpful having had more backstory on Ben Riley if you hadn't read uh, say warts and all or the uh, earlier comics. Now there's a, there's a couple ty uh, typos here. Um, actually, like, uh, if you, I've learned to value, should be what I have. And then, uh, 20 is misspelled. And so, <clears throat> yeah, again, that's like, uh, now those actually would have been caught by spell checkers. So I'm wondering if those were intentional, because this could just be like Heather's, uh, like writing and she may have misspelled it. And so that would be like a, a no, no prize answer. Uh, from back in the, the Marvel uh, bullpen days. But then I was wondering, like, uh, in this other scene, like Heather was saying, uh, they start speaking gibberish when they were infected as their, as, their as their insides were liquefying. So I'm wondering if this is kind of like a, a, a tease that maybe Heather has already been infected by this Piz and that will be revealed later on. This was just a little clue. I don't think so. I hope not. I hope they, Ethan doesn't kill off Heather. And I, I hope I, <laughs> I didn't like just spoil that, but, um, but that'd, that'd be pretty, uh, that'd be actually clever if that's, if that's what Ethan's doing here. And so, yeah, so that does it for this. Uh, again, I, I do highly recommend this. I give it like a, say a 7.5 to an 8 out of 10. Um, uh, yeah, the, the only thing is I, I, I wish it was longer. I wish it like the store, like a, I, I was disappointed when it was done. And, and like they say, you always leave your fans wanting more. So I, I'd say Ethan definitely did that. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to uh, Wreck Planet when it arrives and continuing the story. It, it's, it's really a, uh, in, uh, interesting idea, like uh, Ethan taking his character and putting him in this uh, post-apocalyptic scenario. And ho hopefully he does like a, I know like Warts and All ended on a bit of a cliffhanger, so I, I hope he goes back and does some maybe uh, stories that happened between Warts and All and before uh, and before the invasion here. The uh, Maybe that uh, he'll go back and do those. That'd be a lot of fun. So, um, thank you for sticking with me, all, uh, through this whole thing. Again, this was only my first, uh, comic review. So, uh, got any, uh, advice, uh, comments, uh, pl please leave, a uh, leave a comment below. Please like and, uh, share this video and please subscribe and check out my other contact, uh, uh content. Thanks. Bye.